قيامنا اللهم وفقنا للصيام شهر رمضان وقيامه ايمانا واحتسابا اللهم وفقنا لاعتكاسه ايمانا واحتسابا اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه امين we continue inshallah ta'ala during these nights in reflecting through some of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but briefly recapitulating what we have said before first of all up to this time what we spoke about was in the context of that ayah in surah al-baqarah in the beginning of surah al-baqarah which is about al-khilafa but what does khilafa therefore mean as we have learned throughout that we human beings we do represent the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala in his attributes to be a khalifa of someone is to represent him as he is as he wills as he wants and he subhanahu wa ta'ala له الأسماء الحسنى to him belong the beautiful names and attributes to truly represent him we should therefore ourselves embody and internalize his attributes at our best human level for example Allah's attribute is Rahim therefore I must be Rahim. Allah is Rahim infinitely in the divine sense. I must be Rahim to the best of my human potential. Allah is Adl, is just. To represent Him, I must be just to the best of my human level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Kareem, is generous in the infinite level. I must be kareem to represent him at my best possible human level. Wahakala. Allah is Alim, Allah is Hakim, Allah is Sabur, Allah is Shakur, Allah is Alim, Allah is Halim. When I embody the attributes in myself at my best potential human level. And it is in that context that we were speaking about what we were speaking. And therefore, every time we human beings fail to embody the attributes of Allah subhanahu at our human level, we are not fulfilling the khilafah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If instead of being rahim, mercifully loving, I am... Uh, the opposite of that. I am uh, merciless. I am rude. I am bloodthirsty. I am unkind. Then I am the worst mediocre representation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa haqala. Please remember that. It is in that context that you are saying what we are saying. And remember, these are the first ayat in the Qur'an. Before Allah begins to tell us about laws and all of that, this is how he starts. In other words, everything else is about this. The rest are commentaries and details. And it is in that context also that we mentioned the importance of patience and... What else? Sabr and, and Salah. It is in that context that we mentioned the importance of Sabr and Salah. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ Salah, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that, in those ayat, as He was subhanahu wa ta'ala leading us from that ayat to later uh, in, in the Qur'an. 
and that in that context that we emphasize some aspects of siyam and sabr and some aspects of salah and we spoke most importantly in salah about what? about khushu in salah about being present mentally and emotionally and spiritually in our salah and not to be absent minded and careless and bored and somewhere else in our minds in salah that khushu' in salah led us to speak about what? Who remembers? Khushu' outside of salah. To be always in a state of khushu' Always in a state of khushu' For we have learned that if I want khushu' in salah, I must be in khushu' outside of salah. And when I work on being in khushu' outside salah, I will be in khushu' inside salah. It's a feedback loop. It's a feedback loop. loop. I cannot be in khushu' in salah if outside of salah I allow my eyes freely to look at anything. Signals I receive. Signals I receive. They will disturb my heart. They will haunt me in my dreams, as we said, and in my salah, and in my life, yes, in general, and in my salah. The way I use my ears outside of salah, what I listen to, what I hear, the way I use my tongue outside of salah, and so on. All of that are signals that are going to collect inside of me. And then when I come to Salah and say, Allahu Akbar, Shaitan uses what I already have to trigger my distraction and my pain and my mindlessness in my Salah. Billah. And thus Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to, wants us to be helped through Salah. Get help in Salah for outside of Salah. And that goes, feeds back into Salah as well. Khushu'a all the time. Khushu'a all the time. As Allah Azza wa mentions Khushu'a, not only in context of Salah as He does, but also He mentions to us Khushu'a in the general context. Uh, indeed, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that led us to speak of, again, being clean inside and outside in general. From the ayah in the Quran which says what? Ya Bani Adama Qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum warisha wa libasu taqwa thalika khair Allah speaks to us about two kinds of clothing two kinds of garments we need to wear an external one not to uncover and expose our bodies and our aura as nowadays in devolving human beings give up their clothes in the name of freedom of expression, in the name of liberty and freedom and emancipation. And that's false. And human beings will realize that one day or the other. Some do already. Libas and yuwari sawatikum, that external libas, and the internal libas, or libas of taqwa, and he calls taqwa, God consciousness, internal spiritual awareness of the divine, he calls that also libas, garment, clothing. And shaitan, he says to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants to remove those garments from you. Ya bani adama, la yaftinannakum shaitanu, كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة ينزع عنهما لباسهما That's what shaitan does. That's what shaitan wants. Allah Azza wa Jal says, don't let him do that to you. And this is in the beginning of the Quran still. Don't let him do that to you. Guard your clothing internally. Guard the beautiful clothing of taqwa and therefore of haya and of amana and of sidq and so on guard that guard that shaitan's ultimate objective is to remove that from your hearts and your lives and externally as well 
we focused on that and we gave examples of that through the example of Sayyiduna Musa and his story and how we, we, we saw how there is haya in that, in that story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us haya from both Sayyiduna Musa and the young woman and we reminded our young women and not so young women and our young man and not so young man to guard their chastity to guard their haya to guard their hearts not to give up the value of haya because the world oftentimes doesn't appreciate and understand these special gifts from Allah Azza wa Jal. In the world with more materialistic tendencies tends to give up the spiritual values and the moral values and we tend to copy from one another and we tend to lose our haya. Our women lose their haya. Our men lose their haya, mimicking and imitating others who have chosen a different state of values in their lives. Be careful. As I said to myself and to you, be careful, be careful, be careful in facing the challenges of modernity. You do not have to give up your constant moral values to be modern. As, they, you know, as some people want you to synonymously understand modernity with giving up values and moral values and spiritual values and haya. No. No. And no. Like to be an American, you don't have to give up your Islam. Don't. Nobody says that. The Constitution doesn't say that. The Constitution gives you all those rights. You can be American and the best Muslim. And the best Muslim, you can be, alhamdulillah, in the positive sense, progressive, modernist, if you want to use those terms, but never giving up the moral constants of your deen and the spiritual constants of your deen unlike what some would like you to do and to understand like you as Muslims and outside as well no you don't have to do that that's what shaitan wants that we do don't give up your internal beautiful values and we have learned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa informed us that in the latter days in his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa of the first thing that shall disappear from our deen from our faith from our religion are moral values and he spoke of what first removal of haya and of amana haya bashfulness that some people translate as bashfulness or timidity and so on which has become nowadays something not desirable the desired thing is to be on the, on the contrary aggressive, not timid, not shy but aggressive, outspoken you know, rude, tough man or woman on the contrary, haya is not liked but by most people they call that a medieval value. They call that a medieval value. Haya is a constant moral value. And in Viv is the value of our deen. Al Imanu, as Rasulullah said, Inna li kulli deen in khuluqan wa inna khuluq al Islam al Haya. The defining characteristic of our deen of Islam is Haya. You remove haya from Islam and it's an ugly Islam or no Islam. Listen to me, my sisters and my brothers, my young sisters and my young brothers. Please, learn about what haya is. I think we have to relearn it. Some of us have lost what haya means. And we live in environments in which we are used to attitudes of lack of haya and it's the standard. 
We have to relearn haya. Al haya kullu khair, as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned. Please keep that in mind. May Allah bless you and bless us all. Insha'Allah Taala. Today, in the few minutes we have left, I'm going to begin to talk or talk about also briefly as a reminder about something also from the Quran that we can extract. Something, for example, in Surah Al-Kahf, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we recited already, tells us of two friends. وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَرَجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا He speaks to us about these two friends, one of whom Allah favored with a lot of riches, a lot of land, big ranches, orchards, fields of wheat, corn or fruits and so on. Water flowing, rivers flowing in the midst of them, producing fruits. In those days, the agricultural world, this was a very rich and very powerful man, it seemed. And he believed in God. He believed in God in the story as he tells us. He's, they are together, they are probably in a, in a conversation, and then uh, Allah tells us, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرْ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أنا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا Subhanallah, listen to this. Allah describes these gardens that He subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon this man. And then he says to us, and the gardens, both of them, did not commit zulm. Look at this metaphor. كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Both gardens produce the fruits thereof that Allah Azawajal ordered, and none of them committed zulm. In other words, Allah instructed in the way He does the atoms and the cells of the trees and of you know, all the plants to produce what He programmed them to do. In their reality, they, in their dimension, they obey Allah and they did not transgress. None of them committed the zulm. Look how Allah says, the garden didn't commit zulm. And zulm is injustice, aggression, transgression. كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Not even for a bit. But listen what he says now. These are the two gardens that the man owns. And Allah describes what he bestowed upon the man. And then Allah continues to say كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا فَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا We already mentioned about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused water to spring in the midst of those two gardens. وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرْ And there were fruits. وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرْ Now this is what happens. And he's with his friend. They're talking, looking at what there is. فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ In a conversation, in a dialogue between them. أنا خير أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا. So he began by saying أنا أنا I me أنا سبحان الله أنا أكثر منك مالا is I am wealthier than you. I have more wealth than you. 
أنا أكثر منك مالا سكن وأعز نفرا العزة بنفره In other words that man has an exalted state he has عزة power on account he said of his human resources وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرَ The way you would translate it in the context of modern language that is I have a lot more human resources than you do employees and workers and so on and so forth wealth and human resources I have all of that more than you and greater than you in this attitude, with this attitude, he enters his gardens. Allah says, Al Jannah did not commit zulm. The owner of Jannah is a zalim. This is very profound. La ilaha illallah. Al-Jannah, the garden, is not a zalim. The owner is a zalim. وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا And then, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي لَمْ تَظْلِمْ يَدْخُلُهَا صَاحِبُهَا ظَالِمًا لا إله إلا الله وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ What is that ظلم? How is it? What he said, Anna, first of all, Anna, أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا. I am richer and I am more powerful with resources. And then also, قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا. Man, this man has been doing this work for a long time. He has resources. He works hard. He's probably smart. You know, he manages. Allah knows whether he does that with kindness or with harshness. So, but he is very successful man in running his business. So he enters that garden and says. I think this will never be destroyed. This will never ever come to a point where it produces no fruits at all. Because he's been doing that for years and he has experience. He does, he gets. He works, he gets. This is all what's in his mind. Resources, results. Work, success. And that is the vuln in his nafs, inside of him. That's the transgression. مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا And then, وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمًا وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا And he says, and I doubt that the hour, the end of the days, the end of the world will come soon. That's how it should be understood. ما أظن الساعة قائمة. I don't think it's going to come any time soon. وما أظن الساعة قائمة. And plus, ولا إرددت إلى ربي. And plus, if it were to come, and I die, and I'm returned to my Lord, it means he believes in God. لا أجد أن خير منها منقلبة. I will find with my Lord God something even better than that. Allahu Akbar. Now, this man is, you know, he is he's some sort of a believer. What is his problem? As we shall see later. Maybe. He relied too much on himself. He relied too much on what he has. He relied too much on his resources, on his plentiful resources. He relied too much on his hard work, on his intelligence, on his ability to plan, to manage. He takes all of that for granted. Anna, Anna, I, I. He relied on that. He did not, with that, rely on 
Allah Azza wa Jal. He instead of saying when he sees what he has, Hada min fadli Rabbi, he says, Ana. Instead of when he or she, nowadays we speak to everybody of us, sees what he or she has in this life, instead of seeing Allah the giver, the first thing that comes to mind is, I got that through hard work. So I see my ability, my intelligence, my resources, my know-how, instead of again seeing Allah first. And هذا يسمى الشرك بالأسباب. This is shirk, not in not believing in God. He believed in God. He believed even it seems in the hereafter. But what was his shirk like? Inside his mind and his heart, he relied on material created things, not on Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why he's a valim. He's a transgressor. He's a valim. قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَكَفَرْتْ Then his friend retorted and said to him, Do you disbelieve? Akafart, you have become a kafir? Akafart, on account of that? Billadhi khalaqak. Akafart, billadhi khalaqak. In other words, you now are ignoring and denying the one who created you. You seem to forget. Because of what you have, you think of what you have, and you forgot that at one point you didn't even exist. He created you, not only what you have, He created you. You ignore Him now when you look at your wealth, and your power, and your resources, and your work. You ignore Him? How could you do that? And that's ingratitude. Kafar sometimes, kufr means to be ungrateful. Kufranun ni'ma. When one has has resources and has goods and favors and does not remember Allah. That's called kufr bima'na kufr ni'mah in the sense that one is ignoring and denying the grace and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. And that's in the Arabic language is called also kufr. وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ That is kufranun ni'mah. And kafara in the Arabic language, you know what it means? It means to cover, to hide something. So a kafir is a kafir because she or he hides the truth about the divine and ignores it. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ قَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُ وَوَحَاوِرُ أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابِ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا Do you deny that? Do you ignore that? And look only at yourself and forget that He is the source of everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stop here, bi ta'ala, and we implore and beseech Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help us be of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them. May Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, save us from us. May Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives us only that which is enough for us. And not to give us that by which we become rebellious. Do you accept this? Are you sure? Ya yeah, Allah, give us only what we need so that we continue to be good servants of you. Don't give us more if we become rebellious. Don't give me so much that I will turn to be rebellious. Wal'ayyad billah. Qalilun yakfiq khayrun min kafir yutghik. قليل يكفيك خير من كثير يطغيك as it is said little that suffices you in any sense is better than much that makes you rebellious 
ve sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ala seyyidina mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi tahirin ve ashabihi meyanin. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuhu.